such as should be saved. And let us remember uh, all bereaved families, amen, and as uh, we all have experienced losses, and let us, let us pray for those that are grieving, those that are going through. Yes. Amen. And let us pray also for the dying world, uh, that the Lord will continue to save and add to the church daily, such as should be saved. Um, the scripture that comes to my mind uh, says that people do certain things because the Lord, they say the Lord delayeth his coming. Amen. Not realizing that the long suffering of God is salvation. So let us, let us pray that people will uh, turn their hearts uh, to the Lord and, and cleave unto him with a purpose in heart. Uh, do we have any other prayer requests? Let us remember uh, Sister uh, Helen Morris that the Lord will uh, touch her body and grant her complete deliverance and her brother Anthony that the Lord will bless them in exceedingly in a special way. Um, mother Davis. Continue praying for the Chinese grace. Yes. <coughs> oh, amen. Yes. Thank you, Sammy. Pray the Lord's name. I desire to all last week. 
years, Jay, because the home has just become a, a nuisance home. Mm. They, they're, it's, they're two brand new houses, and there's a lot of drug activity going on. It's a lot of in and out fighting until three and four and five and six in the morning. And I'm like, you know what? This is just ridiculous. Right. Um, I mentioned for the city council meeting that, you know, they're over there, they're using substance, they're under the influence, and then they have firearms. SWAT has been there. Oh. So it's just been, it's been something. Um, not used to that kind of stuff in my neighborhood. Yeah. We, we have a quiet, vibrant neighborhood. Right. Right. And so, um, you know, even when I asked the young lady and the young man, said, you know, it's home time, it's three o'clock in the morning. She invited me out to the middle of the street to fight her. I was like, you got to be kidding me. You're 30 years my junior, and I don't resolve issues like that. Right. So I did go to the city council, and I'm asking that you all would pray that the Lord will make a way either for this young lady to turn herself around, because I know everybody got to have some place to live, or move, get her out of there, because it's so dangerous, it's just unreal. Mm -hmm. And the person that lives beside her, um, she's got a lot going on as well. It's just so much, I'm like, this is, this is just too much for me. I need you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is my house, I don't rent. And you know, I'm not saying anything bad about people that do rent, mm -hmm. but I'm vested, and I'm not going anywhere unless the Lord tells me that I'm going to move it out, because he gave me that house. Mm -hmm. And so I just ask that you all agree in prayer with me that um, city council works with hand to bring some closure to this issue as well. Continue to keep my son lifted up in prayer. Pray for me in my house. Amen. Amen. Certainly a lot to pray for, and I commend you. Putting your faith to works, yeah. man. Doing, going through the necessary channels to see the things happen, yeah. and I'm convinced God will move on your behalf because you took a few steps. And yeah. God works that way. Yeah. Amen. So we certainly going to pray for that. Uh, let the church stand. Uh, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we certainly come before you, Lord. We certainly thank you, praise you for your grace, your mercy, your love, and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to, to bow down and humble ourselves. We ask you that you stretch out your hand, continue to encourage and strengthen. Bless each and every request that's been made known. Remember, Lord, our family members, our loved ones. Remember those that we need a hedge of protection about us. Watch over us, Lord. Keep us from danger, seen and unseen. And, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you go into the hallway and the house, hospitals and touch bodies, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, remember those that... Uh, come to this particular assembly, Lord. Remember our brother Mikhail in a special way. And Lord, we ask you that you bless our Bible study, strengthen us, watch over us, keep us, and Lord, send forth your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Certainly a lot to pray for. Yes. And uh, those are travailing prayers that I heard on tonight. Praying for our loved ones, our community, our family, protection. Amen. Amen. God, God knows. Yes, he does. Yes, God knows. All right, I want you to turn with me uh, explicitly to the book of Hebrews, uh, chapter number 12. Hebrews, chapter number 12. Amen. Also, too, um, before I forget it, uh, I wanted to make uh, an announcement concerning it. Um, it's the convocation, P-C-A-F-I, uh, convocation this week. It starts today. Um, so if you, if you go to P-C-A-F-I, you'll be able to uh, live stream the this, this service. They want you to register, and, uh, but you'll be able to live stream at least the evening services. All right. Uh, Hebrews chapter number 12. I'm going to ask uh, Elder Crosby if she would uh, begin reading for me, uh, starting with uh, verse number 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Now, that's my 
our subject on today, um, running with patience. Yes. Running with patience. Yes, Lord. That's the subject on today, running with patience. And uh, in this chapter number 12, at verse number 1, Paul is really trying to exhort us. He's trying to exhort us uh, based on uh, chapter number 11, wherein they talked about uh, some champions of faith. Some champions of faith. And um, these champions of faith, as Paul is putting it, saying that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, uh, is really trying to say that uh, if they could get here today, they would literally be our cheerleaders, cheering us on. And uh, because they have literally gone through and they have made it and yes. surrounded by a great cloud. If you think about them being in heaven, <laughs> hallelujah, being in heaven and have, as so to speak, received their crown. Yeah. And they're seeing us run the race because we're, we're, in, the, we're in the competition. Uh, yes, I yes. think of it as a coliseum, mm -hmm. and uh, we're in the competition, fighting against evil, fighting against things, and and trying to strive to get where they are. Yes, and they would be literally cheering us on, encouraging us. You can make it. You can make it. We made it. You can make it. Hang on in there. Watch and pray. Stay right there. Don't give up. It's yes. good on this other side, yeah. and you'll enjoy it. That's how they would be encouraging you, my God. And, and you know, these heroes of faith, as we said, uh, Paul mentions them in chapter number 11. And uh, he talks about uh, Abraham, he talks about uh, uh, Enoch, translated, that he should not see death. Amen. Why? Because he is, he pleased God. He would be up here cheering you on, you know, telling you, please God, just do what God says. <laughs> hey, you know, you can be where I am. Moses. And uh, talked about those that uh, uh, were sawn asunder, refusing, amen, to, to eat, I won't say it this way, to eat of the king's meat like Daniel, you know, refusing, you know, to surrender, to give up. Uh, thrown in lion's den, going burned with oil, um, and they, they would tell you it's worth it. You know, look at Stephen. Stephen was stoned to death, then looked up into heaven and said, "Lord, forgive him." Saw Jesus standing on the right hand. You know, that's encouraging. That's encouraging, and that's what Paul is trying to exhort the believer to be encouraged. You know, and we ought to also. Uh, not only those brethren, but but let me ask you a question. Uh, the Lord dropped this in my mind. He said, ask him, who do you admire that has gone on uh, uh, into, into heaven? Uh, those, those people that you admire that live this life. Yeah. Amen. They would be there included, encouraging you. Even the more saying, I, I know her. Uh, I know him. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I, 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 I prayed with him. I tarried with him. Uh, uh, I, I, I fasted with them. I, I, I was in service with them. Yeah. And, and, and that's, what, that's what Paul is alluding to. I know uh, my, my, one of my heroes, I'm sure some of y'all's too, Bishop Radcliffe, I've been thinking about him sometimes. And, and oftentimes, I don't know why, that this one brother, uh, he lives out in Chicago. I only really saw him come here and preach once, but his testimony encouraged me, uh, Bishop Ordeer's right. And uh, he came for a lag week uh, of meeting. And what encouraged me was he was in the final stages of cancer. And, and, and you wouldn't have known it. You wouldn't have known it. And, and he told me, he was on the elevator, he said, yeah, my wife didn't want me to come and, uh, because, you know, I'm in the final stages of cancer. And I'm looking, you know, young say. No, I'm looking, I'm like, man, what you doing? You know, but but he realized, you know, that that you know he accepted the call, came and preached the dynamic message, got back on the plane, 
and went on, went on home to glory. You know, what a testimony, you know, of being faithful unto death. You know, believing that God would heal him, you know, but still doing the service and the work of God. Amen. Those are the kind of people we ought to remember. Come on. Amen. Yes, sir. And, 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 and use as a witness. Yes. Amen. Why? Because they have a testimony. Yes. Amen. They have a testimony. We should remember those that have impacted our lives because they got a testimony. Yes. Amen. Yes. And they would be encouraging us yes. uh, even the more. Continue on. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't give up the ship. Uh, don't give up the faith. Yeah. Stay right there. God is faithful. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Now, me, remember when people have poured into you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. When people have put into you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Don't, don't, don't count that as a light. Yes, Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Look at what they have done. Yeah. So Paul says, wherefore seeing we are compassed about, notice what he called it, a great cloud uh, of witnesses. Those that are gone on before us, uh, a great cloud of witnesses and, and, and to inspire us. Notice what he says about these witnesses as well. His, his thought is because he's exhorting us and that means he's encouraging us. And, and the other thought is, is that not only should we remember them, but we should also be like them. Amen? Be like them. Yeah. Especially those that are written in the book of uh, 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 chapter number 11. Amen? Those that are a part of the great hall of fame. Amen? Yeah. We want to be like them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. Be like them. Hallelujah. And, and, and those people whom you admire that has gone on uh, in the Lord, uh, he's encouraging us to be like them. Amen. Because they made it. Yes. Hallelujah. And, and we want to make it, don't we? Uh, Lord, help me to make it. Yes. <laughs> and, yes. and, and you know, you got to be sold out to want to make it. Yes. Amen. Sold out, made up by. Uh, and, and come to a, a, a resolution that there's no other way. Amen. No other way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No other way. And I want to be like that. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Uh, faithful unto death. Amen. We've got, we've got examples that we all can look back on and see that they was faithful unto death. Yes. Uh, I remember uh, going to the hospital full of zeal, vim and vigor and I was going to play for uh, Sister uh, Beast. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I got there to the hospital and I said, well, Mother Beast, let's have a word of prayer. She said, uh-uh. Uh-uh. I'm ready to go. She goes, just let me go. <laughs> I never forget that. Uh, a shine and a glow on her face. Uh, she's like, hey, no, I'm ready to transition. Thank you, Lord. And I was like, whoa. Never heard it on that wise. Amen. She said, hold on here, brother. <laughs> Shook her head and said, no, no, go ahead. I'm good. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, you know, you walk in some and believe in some. Amen. Trusting in some. Hallelujah. They had that kind of faith. Hallelujah. But she lived a life. Amen. A life of holiness and righteousness. Amen. She was ready. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's, that's what I want to be. I want to be ready. Amen. Hallelujah. Be ready. Thank you, Jesus. Be ready when the Lord comes. And I want to, I want to live my life like she lived her life. Amen. Ready. Amen. Faithful. Uh, this is what Paul is encouraging. This is, the, this is why he's uh, bringing in these great cloud of witnesses that we ought to be ready, be like them. And also, they, if they could get back here to us, they would be encouraging us. Amen. Those people whom you admire, uh, they, they would encourage you. Uh, hold on. Amen. Uh, don't look back. <laughs> Uh, don't be like Lot's wife. Amen. Don't look back. Uh, be steadfast. Be unmovable. Uh, always abound in the work of the Lord. Can you read that verse again? Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with yeah. so great a cloud of witnesses, uh -huh. let us lay aside every way. Yeah. And the sin which does so easily beset us. So 
So Paul, Paul is saying, then he says, since we're compassed about with, with so great a cloud of witnesses, then he says, let us do something. He's also encouraging us, exhorting us. Uh, let us do something. He said, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. Now, 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 because he's, he's encouraging us to run this race, amen, to run this race, we're going to talk more about that uh, in, in a few moments. He's, he's literally telling us how to run the race, amen, he's literally telling us how to run the race. And the first thing he says to us is to uh, lay aside every weight. Uh, you gotta, you gotta lay some things aside, amen, to run this race. And what he meant by uh, laying aside and and uh, a weight are are unnecessary things that we carry, amen. If you think of a runner and uh, a runner who is, uh, whether they can be a sprinter or a long distance runner, uh, they don't, they they don't have a whole lot of baggage with. They don't have a whole lot of clothes on. Amen. They're not carrying their wallet. Amen. And, and, and watches and, 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 and extra clothing upon them. Amen. And, and what Paul is saying here is that, you know, if you're going to run this race, uh, we really need to focus on that which is necessary. Amen. Sometimes uh, we can burden ourselves with the unnecessary. Uh, and if we burden ourselves with the unnecessary, uh, it, it, can, it can destroy us. It can hinder us. Amen? I'm, I'm reminded of uh, uh, Sister Carrie Marsh, another Hall of Fame. <laughs> she, she used to get up and, and testify and said that Jesus says his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Uh, if you're having a hard time here in holiness, you got the wrong, you got the wrong yoke. Then she said, thank you, Jesus. You know what I'm saying? You got the wrong yoke. Amen. So, so, so holiness ain't meant uh, to, be, to be a burden. Amen. Uh, Jesus said, my yoke is easy. Uh, and my burden is light. Uh, so, so if I'm dredging a uh, uh, holiness and righteousness, then I'm trying to do some things I ain't supposed to do. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to carry some things that I'm not supposed to be carrying. Yes, sir. Amen? Amen. I'm trying to get my joy from somewhere else. Yeah. Amen? Uh, because he said his joy is unspeakable and full of glory. Yeah. Uh, if I'm walking around always weak, always tired, amen, I'm, I'm not really walking in, in, in the joy of the Lord. Because the joy of the Lord should be your strength, huh? be your power. Am I right? Uh, so, so we've got to, Paul is really after people examining themselves. Because holiness and righteousness and what God has for us, uh, the scripture talks about it and says, Eyes have not seen nor ears have heard huh? what God has prepared for them that love him. But, but it says also that, that he has shown it unto us. Amen. Those that uh, 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 have a relationship with the Lord, he'll give you a glimpse huh, of, of what, what he has for you. Yeah. Amen. He'll encourage you. Yeah. Huh? He'll, 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 he'll devote some time with you. Yeah. Uh, but if you devote some time with him, uh, he'll take you to places. Yeah. Uh, he'll open up the scripture uh, to encourage your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you can just count the visions and, and count the revelations uh, that God has given unto you. Hallelujah. Through Jesus Christ, through the Holy God, God He gave you the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The anointing. Huh? Hallelujah. That encourages you, strengthens you. Hallelujah. To, to give you a glimpse of glory. Uh, if you haven't had a glimpse of glory, ask him for Lord, show me a little bit of your glory. Uh, Moses, he had the audacity to ask, uh, how much not for us? Oh, hallelujah. And God, God, God showed him his handy part, showed him some of his glory. And God will show you 
Huh? Some of his glory to encourage you. Uh, we all need encouragement. Uh, uh, we all need encouragement. Uh, uh, but, but, you know, we got to lay aside some stuff. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And, and, and some weights. That's what Paul is saying. So we, we, we get involved sometimes in some unnecessary things. And, and you know, I like how, how Paul has put this because uh, we all are different. Amen. So he just said, lay aside the weight. Uh, you you got to lay aside whatever your weight is. Right. Amen. Uh, uh, he also said in Corinthians, let a man examine himself. Uh, you got to examine yourself. Uh, let me some things uh, 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 that, that I carry and uh, uh, it's not a burden to me, but if you try to carry it, it'd be a burden. Some things that you carry may not be a burden to you, but if I try to do it, it'd be a burden to me. Amen? Thank you. So we've got to uh, examine ourselves. Amen? Because uh, 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 carrying around excess baggage, doing excess stuff yes, sir. that gets in our way. Yeah. Amen? That, that causes a distraction. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. That's what Paul is after. Don't be distracted. Don't be weighed down. Amen? Hallelujah. Don't, don't, allow, don't allow people, places, or things to wear you down. Yeah. Amen? Huh? In other words, I like, I was, I was at a funeral in Mississippi. When I first heard the term, I said, well, what does that mean? Amen? The guy said, uh, he was talking about, he was actually doing a funeral. And, and he was talking about one of his parishioners. And uh, he said, you know, uh, so and so knew how to cut bait. I'm like, well, what do you mean by that? You know, cut bait. You know, first time I heard that. You know, and that's a, I guess it's a fishing term, cut bait. And and what he was really after, you know, uh, cutting that which is excess. Amen. You out there fishing, and what you fishing ain't catching nothing. Huh? Huh? Cut bait. You know, move on. Let that go. Go on to something else. Uh, but if you're into something, and he ain't talking about sin here, he's talking about stuff that, that, that hinders you, uh, that distracts you, uh, and it's not profitable unto you. Uh, he ain't talking about sin. Uh, and he said, cut it all. Uh, cut it all. Jesus put it this way. He said, if your eye offend me, pluck it out. Uh, if your hand offend me, but cut it all. Uh, it's better to enter into life uh, half made and hope hallelujah then lose out huh? stop don't don't Paul Paul said you got we got we got a great race to run amen we we got we got we got a, we got a ways to run we got a ways to go amen and he says let us lay aside now notice he says lay it aside and that that literally means you've got to do something huh and and don't how can I say, Lord, help me hear Holy Ghost. Don't feel bad about leaving it aside. Amen? Uh, it's a hindrance. Uh, it's stopping you. You follow me? Oh, hallelujah. Now, sometimes those weights, we get, we personalize them. And, and we carry them around thinking that, well, this is the cross I have to bear. Uh, but God ain't gave you that cross. God ain't put that on you. You put that on yourself. Amen? Hallelujah. So, so lay aside that kind of weight. And then he said, he said, we in Hebrews chapter number 12 and verse number 1, he says, wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great cloud of witnesses, and he says, let us lay aside every weight, read, and the sin which does so easily now, this sin here, which he's talking about, he's literally talking about uh, uh, entanglements. Entanglements. Those sins, the scripture talks about, uh, we all know to stay away from the big sins. Don't. I hope we do. <laughs> but he's talking, about, he's talking about the little foxes uh, that can destroy the body. Those little uh, 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 things that we get entangled with. Amen? 
He's talking about being entangled with sin. Uh, this, this connotation here reminds me of the snake. Amen? How <laughs> a snake, uh, y'all seen that, uh, that, 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 that cartoon, The Jungle Boy? And, and that little boy was, was in the jungle, and the snake uh, approached him and tried to hypnotize him, and then finally wrapped himself around him, you know, by hypnotizing him, looking at it, hypnotizing him, wrapped himself around him. Amen? And before he knew it, we, and I believe one of the other animals rescued the boy uh, when the snake was about to get him. Amen? And that's what, that's what the devil does. Amen? He mesmerizes us, and as he's mesmerizing us, he's wrapping his slithering body around us to choke the life out of us, and then he that will let, will let till he be let out of his wheel. You follow me? And, and that's the kind of sin he's talking about here. Uh, those, those no harm sins that we think are no harm, uh, those things that we get, <laughs> we get involved with, like, like playing the lottery. Oh, it's not wrong with playing the lottery. Uh, it, ain't, it, ain't, it ain't nothing wrong with cussing a little bit. Uh, uh, you follow me? It ain't, it, ain't, it ain't nothing wrong with uh, 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 drinking alcohol and smoking some weed, things like that. Uh, and when we get involved around it, we get entangled in it. Amen? That's what he's talking about. Uh, the sin that does so easily beset us. Uh, 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 uh. When he's talking about those besetting sins, he's talking literally about a uh, sin that we have pleasure in, that we struggle with, uh, that we rationalize in our own mind. Amen? Now, let me say this. Thank you, Jesus. The Holy Ghost is helping me teach tonight. Uh, 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 Israel, uh, they came out of Egypt uh, to, for this main purpose to worship and serve their God. But, but they, they always entangled themselves in sin, didn't they? Uh, 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 they literally, even though the Bible, uh, it, it hits on it, but uh, uh, it, it talks about them having high places. Amen. He tell them, tear down them high places. When they came out of Egypt, and we get a glimpse of that when they made the calf, the golden calf, didn't they? Didn't they make a golden calf? Moses was taking too long. Huh? So, so, so they said, now notice how the entanglement started. They said, oh, Moses is taking it too long. Let us huh, make gods huh, to say that these gods delivered us. Amen. So, so, so God brought them out, uh, and they still had a mind, huh? Was in that old mind because they wasn't renewed in their mind. They started getting back in pain. Yes. Amen. This is what Paul is talking about. If you don't renew your mind, uh, you'll start getting back in pain. Amen. Now notice they they had they were they were out of Egypt uh, in the wilderness. Headed toward the promised land, but yet they still worship these idol gods. Uh, couldn't get away from it. Still entangled themselves. Amen. This is what Paul is after. Uh, that, that God has brought you out. Uh, think it not strange if you still have some idol worship in you. Uh, some idol worship in you. You follow me? And he said, don't uh, he said, lay aside uh, those, those sins which you think are too bad. Yeah. <laughs> you follow me? Yeah. Which you think won't destroy you. Uh, which you think won't uh, 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 get you. Because uh, a little leaven does what? Leaven what? The whole love. Amen? So, so, so we can stay away from fornication, adultery. Hopefully you stay away from lying. Uh, <laughs> you follow me? Uh, and, all, and all the rest of the Ten Commandments. You follow me? Thank you, Lord. But, but what about backbiting and all the other little stuff that we don't gossip? Uh, uh, those little foxes. Uh, those little foxes. You follow me? Uh, be aware of that. Uh, and then I love it, I love it, because Paul, he's literally encouraging us. 
Take, examine yourself. Yeah. Uh, don't put yourself in situations uh, where we're in. You know you a gossiper. So, you know, uh, uh, stay away from them late night calls. <laughs> you know, so uh, uh, when, when you feel that, uh, you know, so-and-so call you, uh, cut that conversation short. Uh, you follow me? Why? Because it's going to lead into something. Uh, it's going to lead into something. Watch, watch. Lest you enter into temptation. Watch, watch. This is what Paul is saying. Watch. Uh, watch. Watch and pray. Seek God. Watch and pray. Lay aside that. Lay that stuff aside. Huh? Now notice what he said. Can you read that verse again? Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, uh -huh. let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. So the weights that he's encouraging us to let go of are unnecessary activities that hinder us. Yes. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. So pay attention. Amen? To, uh, are you doing any unnecessary activities that hinder you? Amen? Now, I'm going to be honest. The, 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 the day has 24 hours. We get up. Uh, maybe, I don't know what time you get up, but maybe you got 12 hours left in the day. Uh, how do you spend your time? Uh, because we can be busy. Amen? And, and, and really not do the spiritual things that build you up. Uh, and if we're not careful, we'll justify it. Uh, saying, well, Lord, I was really doing this and this and that. I was busy. I was productive. You know, but, but, but you've left out the way to your matter. Amen? Did you pray? Did you read your word? Yeah. Did you seek after your God? Yes. Huh? Uh, did you have some devotion time with him? Yeah. Uh, did you prepare yourself? Mm -hmm. You follow me? Amen. Uh, you, know, you know you got uh, 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 an assignment to do for the Lord. And the Lord, the Lord wakes you up, gives you information. Yeah. Uh, do, you, do, you, do you forget about the information and go about your day? God drops a, a, a word, a scripture upon you. Yeah. Now, do you take time to, to read that word and meditate on that? Because he's trying to build you up. Yeah. Uh, the Holy Ghost is always talking to us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, trying to lead us and guide us. Uh, but but we've we got we to gotta pay attention so we don't ignore it. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Lord. I'm, 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 uh, uh, sometimes what we do now this is us. We talking now. Thank you, Lord. We 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 substitute prayer by by you know well I'm praying I'm driving to work I'm driving to the store so I'm praying in my mind. Uh, uh, that's it's good to be praying in your mind, but you gotta have some time with the Lord. You follow? Uh, you gotta have some time with Him. Uh, it's it's good to to listen to the the, the Bible on your phone. You know that's all good. But you got to take some time and, and read that Bible. Huh? Let, let, God, let God deal with your heart. Huh? Uh, and then, you know, what I know the Lord is, is great at, because he does it to me. Huh? Shortcomings in your life. The Lord will talk to you about them. Amen? Huh? He'll talk to you about them shortcomings. Huh? Uh, the Lord will chase you uh, about your shortcomings and whatever. Do you pay attention to that? Huh? Do you do you or do you just let that go? And I say, oh, that's just the Lord talking to me again. Huh? No, uh, that ain't just the Lord talking. That's the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> you want that? Huh? That's what you want. Huh? Before you know it, before you know it, if you ain't careful, huh? a whole week could go by. And you say, oh man, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't really talked to the Lord in a whole week. Don't let a month go by. Oh my God, you be weak as stuff water. <laughs> you know, you, you, gotta, you, gotta, you gotta stay in tune with him. He's designed it that way. And God, God, God wants to have daily contact with you. Huh? There's a song, that, that a hymnal song, that says, Daily I will worship thee. 
huh? Lamb of God who died for me. Amen. He wants you to have daily contact with him. Amen. Hallelujah. Never, never forget that. Hallelujah. If, if we haven't, if our lives become so busy that we haven't washed ourselves uh, with the word of the Lord, uh, you dirty. Amen. He said, if you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wash me, Lord. Hallelujah. Don't, don't wait till we end it. Hallelujah. Go, go, go get your family every day. Let's spend some time with him. Amen. And that, that, that excites the Lord. One thing I found out in my studies of the scripture, when we trust him, that excites him. And when we seek him, that excites him. Amen. Those scriptures are not in vain where it talks about uh, 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 no man really seeks to know the Lord. He's, he's, trying, to, uh, he's trying to put it in our minds that, that we ought to seek him. Huh? And that right earth, we ought to inquire. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm dealing with them little daycare children. And uh, I asked them to do something. I said, come on, we're going to take a walk. One say, why? <laughs> why? Everything I ask them, why? You know, why? And I'm thinking about it. I'm saying, well, that's not, that's not a bad question. Huh? We ought to ask the Lord why. Huh? Not, not in the sense of, of, of Lord, you've got to prove it to me. But Lord, let me know. Yeah. Open up my understanding. Yeah. Huh? Am I right? Yeah. Not as if a child would lead him. Huh? Ask God why. Lord, why? Why? Huh? Help me to understand. Help me to know. Amen. Uh, and, and God said, if, if any man like knowledge, do what? Let him ask of God, who give it to every man how? Liberally and upbraid it not. God doesn't get upset with you. Huh? He wants you to seek him. Huh? And this is what Paul is talking about when he said, uh, 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 laying aside the weight. Amen. Don't allow your lifestyle to be so uh, encumbered that it, it kills your endurance. It kills your walk with God. Uh, it takes your focus off of Him. Uh, now, the grand, I know that. I know that. You know, I've lived life. Y'all, some of y'all live life longer than me. Some of I live life. Some of uh, some of uh, of some of you longer than you. And I know life happens. Amen. Life happens, uh, and it can take your attention. Am I right? Uh, uh, but you've got to come to a point and say, when, it, when life is happening, and say, uh-uh, wait a minute. I got to turn my eyes back to the Lord. Yeah. Amen? You get busy. You get to doing things. Am I right? You've got to come to yourself like the prodigal son. Amen? He came to himself. Amen? And start talking about how rich his daddy was. Amen. You got to come to yourself. Amen. And, and get back to those things that were building you up. Get back to those things that, that, that you know that God loves. Amen. Hallelujah. Life happens. The enemy, he's shrewd. Amen. Life happens without, and I'm going to say it this way too. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, say, just tell him the whole thing. Amen. Uh, 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 uh. You can be driving down the street, catch a flat tire. Amen. That ain't the devil. <laughs> that's, that's just circumstance and happenings. Amen. Uh, stuff wear out. Yeah. Stuff break down. Yeah. You know, situations happen. Life happens. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So stop getting upset. Amen. Don't allow yourself to be, to be moved by that. You just move to the next level. You just move to the next thing. Amen. Take care of your business and keep on going. Call Triple A. <laughs> and keep on moving. Amen. Oh, uh, God gave us emotions. Huh? Thank you, Lord. And, and uh, I don't know why I'm getting on this, but God gave us emotions. Right? And, and he didn't give us emotions 
Wherefore those emotions should take us out of his will, he gave us the, the emotions so that we can identify with him. Amen? So we can pray better. <laughs> uh, so we can seek him more. Huh? So we can call on him. Amen? Hallelujah. If you didn't get angry about some things, you may never call on him. Uh, if your heart was never broke, you may never call on him. Uh, if you never experienced joy, you wouldn't know how to thank him. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you. So, so, so life happens. Amen? So don't trip when life happens. Uh, just move on. Am I right? Hallelujah. Now, notice. Uh, go ahead. What verse we in? Verse 1. Lord, have mercy. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, uh -huh. let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. Now, notice. He says, which does so easily uh -huh. beset us. And I, like I said it earlier, I like the way he wrote it, and he didn't get too specific, because we all have issues. It all gets complicated. <laughs> huh? Some things uh, uh, people put on your plate, you like, and you'll eat. Some things they put on your plate, you don't like. Huh? So it doesn't bother you. Amen? Life is like that. Huh? Sin has pleasure. Yeah. Amen? There's pleasure in sin. Huh? Thank you, Lord. And there's some things that you'll say, oh, that's gross. And some things you'll say, hmm. <laughs> huh? The enemy will present it to you. You'll think about it. Amen? Because it's appealing to you. Amen? Hallelujah. So that's what he meant by easily beset you. What's appealing to you? What's your stronghold? Uh, know yourself. Amen? Know what your strongholds are. Know your hot pocket buttons. Amen? Thank you, Lord. That, and I'm referring now to sin. Amen? Entanglements. Amen? Entanglements. Thank you, Jesus. We don't want to, uh, 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 because we got to win. Amen? God wants us to win. Huh? And we want to win. And I said earlier, we surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, and we should be motivated to be like those witnesses. But you got to think how they got to the podium. They got to the podium to, to, to receive their crown and to become a witness by the lifestyle that they live. Amen? And, and somebody was watching them. Huh? Huh? Remember this, beloved. Somebody's watching you. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Somebody is going to not only watch you, but they're going to imitate you. Amen? Thank you, Lord. So we've got to uh, be careful about what we're projecting. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Paul, he wrote it uh, in, his, in his epistles. Amen? He, told, he said, he said uh, you know what kind of life I live? Huh? I live before you. Huh? And he said, you know how I kept nothing back from you? Huh? How I lived this thing? And then in, in Timothy, he said, I fought a good fight. Huh? I kept the faith. This what there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Huh? He, was, he, was, he, was, he was exhorting them huh? by his lifestyle. Huh? Hallelujah. What, what a great testimony to exhort people by your lifestyle. Amen. Hallelujah. Be, be a part of that great cloud of witnesses. I was over at, it was a Baptist church <laughs> uh, there in Erie. I forget the name of that Baptist church. But anyway, y'all probably know it when I say this. Uh, 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 you know, you walk through their front door, they got uh, a, 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 a cloud, and then they got people's pictures in the cloud. You know, they painted uh, the saints. Uh, they painted their, their, their members' pictures in that church on the, on, on the wall in the cloud. Y'all know what I'm talking about? That's my, okay, thank you. Amen. If y'all get a chance, go there and look. Amen. And it reminds you of that scripture. Amen. Hallelujah. It reminds you of that scripture. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God, God, God has witnessed us. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And we're surrounded. Then they encourage us. 
Amen? We ought to be encouraged. Hallelujah. All right? We we set up. We surrounded. Uh, lay aside every weight and the sin that does what? So easily beset us. Uh-huh. Read. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. All right. Now, Paul here is saying that uh, we are running a race. He's telling us that we are running a race. And he's using that, that metaphor. And, you know, Paul, he uses metaphors. And he talks about, let's go here, over here to uh, Ephesians 2 and 6. Ephesians 2 and 6. Let me get there. Uh, Y'all with me? Yeah. All right. Ephesians 2 and 6. And have raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Yes. Here he's talking about we're sitting. Where are we sitting? In heavenly, in heavenly places. Where? In Christ, in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. We're sitting in heavenly places, in Christ Jesus. That's where, that's our, that's our current day location. Yes. Amen? Y'all with me? Yes. All right, then, then, then just go over then to uh, uh, same chapter, same, I mean, same, same book, but go down to uh, chapter, uh, Lord have mercy. Go to, go to chapter number four. And verse number one. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation for which ye are called. All right. So he first said that you were sitting. Now he's talking about your your walk, your walk. When he said that you're sitting, he's talking about you've been translated into the kingdom of God, and you're seated. With Christ Jesus, far above principalities and powers. Yeah. Amen? In other words, when he's talking about that, seated with him, you have power and authority because you're seated with Christ Jesus. Because you are seated with Christ Jesus. Then he says, now, walk. Amen? Uh, and this, your walk deals with your daily lifestyle because you have power and authority now you ought to walk uh, talking about your daily activity your environment how you live amen uh, with Christ Jesus read that verse again therefore the prisoner of the Lord I, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy uh huh now notice, he's talking about now your conduct, how you walk with him. You're seated with, with Christ in a powerful position. Amen? Far above principalities and powers and rules. Amen? Seated in heavenly places with Christ. Now he's talking about you should walk now. Your conduct should be worthy of your position. <laughs> Hallelujah. Isn't that beautiful? Huh? Your lifestyle should be worthy of your position. Huh? How you live your life, it, it matters. Amen? Your conduct. Thank you, Lord. Y'all with me? Just drop down in at uh, verse 17. What does it say? Yeah, so don't, 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 don't live your life as Gentiles. 
Amen? Y'all have conduct like them. Jesus taught that, didn't he? He said, he said to his disciples, if you're going to rule with me, uh, you've got to be a servant. You can't be like the other Gentiles seeking position. Amen? He that is greatest among you is what? His servant. Am I right? Your conduct. How you live it. Paul focuses in on that. He does it again. And go, go to chapter number five. Hallelujah. Chapter number five, verse number two. And walk in love. Now, no, no. How should your conduct be? In love. In love. Your, your lifestyle should exude love. Walk in love. What? And he's talking about that agape love. Walk in it. That's your environment. That's how you live. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Walk in that. He said you're seated with him because you got power now to walk, to live your life. Huh? According to this, walk in love. Live a lifestyle that's associated with the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. People should know huh, that, 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 that we pass from death to life. How? Because of how we love the brother. Amen? That's our calling card. Love. Am I right? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right, go to one more. Uh, drop down to uh, verse 15. See then that you walk circumspectly. Uh-huh. Wow. Read that again. I like that. See then that you walk circumspectly. Now what does circumspectly mean? Be cautious. Be cautious. Huh? Closely. Closely. And, 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 and cautiously. Closely re-examining your, your ways. Yes. Be a reflector. Amen. Why did I do that? Why did I say that? Why did I go there? Why did I wear that? Huh? Did, 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 did my conversation, did it please God? Huh? That's circumspect. Huh? So live your life to learn from your life. Now let me say this. When he says, when he says, not as fools, He's talking literally about uh, ever learning, but never learning nothing. I, I, I've done something that I'm ashamed of, and instead of departing from it, I continue to do it. That's a fool. <laughs> you follow me? There's no deliverance in that. You, 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 you examine it and say, well, I know God didn't like that. You get put in the situation again, instead of doing something different, you're a fool. Do the same thing. Learn from your mistakes. It's good to, I'm going to say this, it's good to learn from other people's mistakes, but it's best to learn from your own mistakes. At least learn that. Don't be a fool. Read that again. That cracks me up. Paul put it out there. See them that you walk circumspectly. Uh-huh. Not as fools. Now don't be a fool. But as wise. Be, be wise. Learn. Examine yourself. When I was growing up, they had Jiminy Cricket. He said, I'm no fool, no serene. I want to live to be 103. I play safe for you and me because I'm no fool. I like it. That's stuck in my mind. <laughs> Five years old. That's stuck in my mind. Don't be a fool. Now, I've done some foolish things, but I ain't forgot that. Huh? <laughs> no fool. Don't be a fool. Huh? You can be wise. Well, I'm going to say it this way. You can be foolish. Nobody know it until you open your mouth. <laughs> huh? So if you don't, if 
you don't know something, don't act like you know it. Then, then everybody, <laughs> that's the scripture. <laughs> that's funny. I mean, that's just funny to me, but, but it's, it's true. You know what I'm saying? Some people are always talking. <laughs> Don't know nothing. Huh? And then, when they get done talking, you and whoever you're in company with, y'all looking at each other. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What the, what the? <laughs> Uh, uh, so, 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 so live your life. Uh, circumspectly. Walk. How you live. Learn from your life. You know, God says your life is short upon this earth. And, but that's short dealing with Kairos time. Kairos time is God's time. But in our time, Kronos time, uh, that's a long time. 60 years, 70 years. 80 years, that's a long time in our time to learn something. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. So learn from your life. Read that verse again, Pastor. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. But as wise. Now, back to uh, our scripture where Paul he talks about how we're seated he talks about how we ought to walk but in our today's lesson he's telling us how we ought to run amen how to run so to examine that let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 9 let me get there I get excited. I forget to turn. 2 uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 9 and verse 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all? Uh-huh. But one receiveth the prize? Right. So run that you may obtain. <laughs> now notice. He's talking here about uh, uh, your, your activity or how you serve. That's what he's referring to as running. Your activity or how you serve. Now, God has got us in a race. Read that scripture again. Notice what he says. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all? Now, notice. Everybody that's baptized in Jesus' name, we all are running in this race. Am I right? Read. But one received the prize. Uh-huh. So run that you may obtain. Now notice. When he says one received the prize, he's talking about those that run in the race that do it lawfully according to the will of God, according to, to, to how God's plan is. You can't be like King Saul. Saul was the king. He was in the race. Am I right? But he didn't do it lawfully. He made up his own rules. He did what he wanted to do. Am I right? And what did God do? He rejected him. Samson, he was in the race. Am I right? And, 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 and Samson, he didn't lay aside the weight of his own lustful evil desires. Huh? Uh, Saul didn't lay aside the weight of his own pride. Huh? And he liked to blame people, other people for his stuff. Samson, he, he, he just loved women. Huh? Solomon, in the race, got the greatest wisdom. He loved women. Turned his heart 
against the Lord. You know, you know what I thank God for? Because if you read uh, uh, Sol Solomon, he wrote uh, a great deal of, of the book of Proverbs, didn't he? Huh? And what I found out was that he wrote those books uh, while he was saved. Uh, then he fell off. I'm so glad, if, if, I mean for us, that we got the best of him uh, while he was saved. You follow? Y'all know people. <laughs> uh, I mean, people, people, he, uh, uh, people. You know, some preachers you hear, you're like, man, they walking with God. Then, then you hear them again, and you're like, oh God, what happened? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Y'all know people who live their life. Amen? You be like, you grew up with them. And uh, uh, you looking good. And then you look at them and say, man, what happened? You like, you're about 70, 90. Like, you're 102. Huh? Something went wrong. Solomon had great knowledge and wisdom. Huh? But something went wrong. You follow me? He decided to give his heart. Am I right? And never came back, never recovered. Never repented. Judas Iscariot. Something went wrong. He was with the Lord. Am I right? Said with Jesus. What got him? What weight got him? I'm asking you a question. Which are, huh? Love. I got it. Love uh, of money. Wow. What did the Bible say about that? The love of money is what? All evil. The root of it. And, 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 and though he repented, he didn't repent to where God would accept it. Or he didn't repent to allow the acceptance of God. Because he hung himself. You follow? So my point in saying all that is, we running in a race. We got to lay aside every weight and sin that does so easily beset us. And he says, read that verse again, Pastor. Uh, no, you're not. That they was running the race, run all. Huh? Now notice. Everybody's running in this race. Read. But one receiveth the prize. Now notice. The one that receiveth the prize is the one that's running lawfully. Read. So run that you may obtain. Now notice. He said, get you a focus. Get you a focus. Define why you're here. Define uh, 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 what you want to receive. Without a vision, the people what? Perish. Get you a vision. And, and that word perish, and it literally means self-destruct. Huh? Without, without living and having a, some, 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 some vision, I live without restraint. Self-destruct. God wants you to have some restraint in your life. Am I right? Hallelujah. You know, a lot of things uh, uh, I don't think of the devil in just because I know it's going to ruin my walk with the Lord and uh, uh, it's not convenient. <laughs> you follow me? Uh, and, and I ain't talking about sin. I'm just talking about activity. You follow me? It's not, it's not conducive. You follow me? I don't sit around watching Netflix because it's not conducive. And I like good series, but it doesn't, it, it, it takes away. You follow? The only reason why I still got a subscription is because my children like it. I'm thinking about uh, uh, letting that go. Don't get the hell, they got job. <laughs> you 
about me. Maybe I'm hindering somebody else. Oh, that, that, now I can let it go. If I'm thinking like that. <laughs> we can talk ourselves into something. Okay. <laughs> but y'all see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so, so we gotta, we gotta run. And, and uh, 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 running is, is, is that I gotta have me a prize. I gotta have a goal in mind. I gotta have a purpose. Why am I living this way? Uh, and then, and then, if that purpose is internalized, it'll it'll channel my decision making. It'll keep me focused. Amen. It'll motivate me. It'll motivate you. It'll drive you. Amen. It'll cause you to lay aside the weight and the sin. Uh, it'll cause you to seek after God, call on His name. Amen. It'll cause you to do that. Uh, I'm a, I'm, can I be honest just one moment? Hallelujah. I told somebody that. They said, I hope you're honest with me all the time. <laughs> you know, but, but, but we got to consider this. When you get into the Lord, the Lord never wants you to, to look back uh, on your sinful ways. He doesn't want you to do He wants you to focus. Huh? He wants you to seek after him. Huh? Never turning back. Never looking back. Never considering or pondering the old lifestyle to, to, to where you have an occasion to go back. Huh? Nothing wrong with testifying about where God has brought you from. That's way different from uh, uh, desiring like the children of Israel when they get into trouble, oh, I had it better in the world than I have it over here. Huh? No. God wants you to focus on him. Uh, never looking back. Am I right? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My God. My God. My God. Thank you, Lord. Can't, can't move forward. Why are you looking back? You'll stumble. You'll fall. Huh? You'll, and then what the enemy will do, he'll create a, an occasion for you to go back. Amen? God, glory. Ah, oh, that's the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Oh, Monique, don't look back. Thank you, Jesus. Don't be like my wife. She looked back. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Now, Notice, read that next verse. We almost done. 25. 25, yeah. And every man that striveth for the mastery is tempered in all things. Now, notice what he said. You're striving to master this life. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's what you're striving to do. Huh? And that striving, you're competing. Huh? You're in competition. Huh? Somebody, uh, you're in competition with yourself. Huh? You're in competition with the enemy. Huh? Hallelujah. And, 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 and all those other weights huh? trying to distract you. Huh? But, but, but you're trying to master your environment. Huh? You're trying to master your situation. Huh? Hallelujah. Not, not, not just be a practitioner, but be to a master. Amen? Huh? Not, not a neophyte, an ignorant person, but, but somebody that's wise. Be, Paul said, I'm a wise master. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Uh, you know, what, what, what we ought to get back on is, is, is living perfection. Amen? Hallelujah. Be it, be it, be it. Be it. Uh, uh, coming to a, a resolution that, uh, uh, Lord, I'm running. I'm trying to make a hundred and ninety-nine and a half won't do. Huh? Live above sin. Amen? Live above reproach. Am I right? Hallelujah. My God. My God. Uh, let Jesus be your God. The master. Hallelujah. My God. My God. You know, uh, when I can take my position, I want, uh, they call me up to the clouds. 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be in the, in, in the mastery position. Amen. Y'all should want to be in the mastery position. Amen. I'm going to nudge some of y'all and say, hey, we made it. <laughs> hey! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, we made it. <laughs> we made it. Hallelujah. I may have some stars, but we made it. Uh, I may have some bumps, but we made it. All right, go. We made it. Hallelujah. Isn't that beautiful? Then, then when he calls us at that roll call, he'll say, and, and he'll say, well done, yes. thy good and faithful servant. Yes. I enter you into the joy of the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. You're talking about a processional. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. Huh? Isn't that, isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Have you ever imagined your white robe, huh? And your ring on your finger and the crown on your head? Hallelujah. That he's going to give you at that day? Oh. Hallelujah. My God. My God. My God. I think about that stuff. Hallelujah. My God. My God. Oh, yeah. God. I got to calm myself down. Thank you, Jesus. But, but, but we want to be masters. Amen. Amen. You want to be masters in holiness. Amen. Amen. I know that in different professions, you got different levels, different degrees. Amen. In holiness, there's different levels, different degrees. Paul in chapter number six of Hebrews, amen, it tells you, leaving the principles of the doctrine. Yeah, huh? Going on to what? Perfection. Amen. Leave the principles of laying on the hands. Huh? Baptism. Amen? Thank you, Lord. But go on to perfection. Master holiness. Amen? Master holiness. All right? Read. He said, what did he say? And every man that strives for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now, that, that temperate in all things, temperate means self-control. Amen? Have some self-control. We live in this world, but we are what? Not of the world. Am I right? He said, when you sit at a king's table and there's a feast going on, know how to cut your throat. Don't be a glutton. Amen? Be temperate. Have some self-control, balance in your life. Amen? Amen? You can overdo prayer. You can overdo reading. Amen? Amen. Uh, you can overdo living a carnal life. You follow me? Have some balance. God knows we're in this world. Uh, have some balance. Am I right? Take time out for your God. All right? Read, Pastor. We got to move on. We all move down. And every man that's striving for the master. Uh huh. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we are we and incorruptible. All right, that's why we do it to obtain an incorruptible. Now let's let's bring this all home and go back to Hebrews chapter uh, number twelve. Uh -huh. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Now notice what he said. Now we talked about running. Amen. Running deals with your 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 activity. Amen. How how you are living and doing. Amen. And your focus. Follow me. What you're leaning into. What are you going after? And he tells you to run. Now notice what he says. He said, run with what? Patience. patience. Now, that word patience, now a lot of runners, uh, if you think about running, a lot of runners ain't running patiently. So that word patiently or patience must mean something else. What it, what it means, is endurance. Run with endurance. 
Endure. Amen? Run your life, live your life with endurance. Endurance. Build yourself up so you can endure, so that you can overcome. Amen? You got your mind focused on the prize, you know that it's going to take time and effort. Amen? Don't be like the seed that fell among the thorns huh? and was choked. Amen? Don't allow God's word and the life, uh, uh, the cares of this life to choke. Paul said often, you ran well, but what? What hindered you? Endurance. Amen? Now notice what he said. Read. Looking up to Jesus, <laughs> the author and finisher of our faith. Now, uh, that word endurance means that there's no rest from holiness. There's no vacation from holiness. Am I right? Is there a vacation from holiness? Is there a rest from holiness? Uh -huh. You're always in it. Uh, you want to remain in the race until the end. Now, he said we're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. But now he brings it home. He hits a home run. He says, now you're in front of the greatest witness. Read that again. Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto who? Jesus. Jesus. Read. The author and finisher of our faith. Now, he's the, he's the, he's the beginner. Huh? And, and, and the, the, the finisher means he's the refiner. Yeah. Amen. He started you on this road. And, and him being the refiner means this. I got to hurry up. I got about four, five more minutes. Him being the refiner means that, that, that he examines your life. Yeah. Uh, and a refiner, when you're on, uh, 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 just say, a potter's wheel, and they got you there, and they, they're getting out all the lumps, they're getting out all the bumps, they're getting out all the imperfections. They're getting out everything that could hinder you, that can cause you to stumble and fall. That's the same way with Jesus. Huh? He refines us huh? to be made in his image, to be made in his life, to be just like him. Amen? He refines our life. Amen? Hallelujah. He purifies us. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. Read. Who for the joy that was set before him uh -huh. endured the cross. Now notice. He looked at the joy that was set before him. You have to look at the joy that is set before you. And endure. There's that word endure which can equate to patience. I'm running this race with patience. Huh? You've got to have a vision of what you're running for. You've got to want to receive the crown. Amen? What he has laid up for you. Huh? More than anything else. Huh? That's how you endure. That's how you go through. You see something. Like the scripture says, Sirs, we would see Jesus. Huh? I want to see Jesus. Huh? I want to be with him. Amen. I want to see what God has for us in eternity. Yeah. I, I want that. Don't you want that? Yeah. I, I, I want to hear him say, well done. Yeah. Thy good and faithful servant. Yeah. I, I want, hallelujah, to, to see the saints of God yeah. uh, rejoicing in the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I, I want to see uh, the new heaven and the new earth. Yeah. Uh, come on here. Hallelujah. I, I want to experience no more trials and no more temptation, no more death and no more dying. Uh, I, 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 I want to put on immortality. Uh, I want to know what that feels like. 
I, I want to know what it feels like not to be in this corrupter. I, I want to put on incorruption. Huh? I want that. Hallelujah. Because I want that, it drives my decision making. Because you want that, it drives your decision making. Amen? Hallelujah. So, 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 like Paul is encouraging, I want to encourage you. Run your race with patience. Endurance. <laughs> Hallelujah. Walk not as fools. <laughs> Hallelujah. You follow me? Thank you, Lord. And then, and then always remember that you're seated uh, in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. All right. Clap your hands and give God a praise. My God. I enjoy this opportunity. Thank you, Lord. We certainly thank God for everybody that's joining us on today. Uh, you have an opportunity to give to Tithely, and we encourage you to do so. Tune in again with us uh, on Sunday at 11 o'clock for our morning worship service. In Jesus' name, amen.